Hey, it's Harkert from Play. Welcome to the second video in our Introduction to Play series. In this video, we're going to focus on prototyping. First, I'm going to show you how you can create an interaction by adding a trigger and an action to your design. And then I'll show you how you can add advanced interactions to your design in seconds using prefabs. Now, in the last video, we talked all about designing. So if you're curious to watch that video, I've linked it in the description below. In that video, we were mostly in design mode here, which is where you'll add objects to your page or your canvas and style them. But when you want to prototype and play, you're going to do that in interaction mode, which you can access by clicking on this tab or using the keyboard shortcut for. Now, before I do that, while I'm prototyping, sometimes you want to have one object on the page at all times rather than switching whatever you have selected. So to do that, I'm going to select my full page and I'm just going to pin it. Now, no matter what I have selected, this page or this card, it's always going to show the page. So now that we've done that, let's go into interaction mode. Now you'll see that interaction mode has some similarities to design mode. On the side, you'll have all of these panels and you can still toggle them into view and out of view. But on the right side, as opposed to the attributes panels, you'll see a list of all of the prefabs, triggers, and actions that are available in play. There's over 400 different combinations of triggers and actions, all the way from super simple interactions with just one trigger and one action to more advanced interactions with multiple actions using things like your device's hardware, native gestures, APIs, conditions, variables, and so much more. But let's start with a super basic interaction, a navigation interaction. Whenever we tap on any of these cards, we want it to go to another page. So our trigger here, which is going to be the cause or the input that the user is giving to the prototype, that's going to be a tap. So we're going to go to our triggers panel over here and either double tap or drag this tap trigger onto the object that you'd like to tap to have this interaction fire. You can also add it from the quick add menu. So just click on this purple button and then you can search for that tap trigger. There's several properties on the tap trigger that you can adjust. And this is just the criteria that the user has to meet for this trigger to fire. So in this case, if the user taps one time with one finger, this interaction will fire. Now the action goes on the trigger. The action is the prototype's response to the input. So when we tap, we want it to take us to another page. So we're gonna add an open page action here. I can choose which page in my project I'd like to navigate to. I'm on the home page right now, and I want to go to the details page. Then I can also adjust the style to be default, full screen, or custom, where I can create my own animation. Because we have nav bars on both pages, we're going to do default, and I'll show you the magic that Play offers straight from Apple. So I'm going to double tap to reset my prototype, and now when I tap on any of these cards, it's going to take me to this new page. And when I tap on that back button, it's going to take me right back. And you can see that if I do a pan, you can see that home title from the home page has now become the back button on the details page. So all of that really cool interaction there, totally built in from Apple. You don't have to worry about the scaling down or the timing. You get all of that for free using Play. And because we created this interaction on the main component, now if I tap on any other components here, all of them are going to complete that same interaction. You can also pass data. We'll link a video for that in the description as well, because we're not doing it in this simple prototype. Now that's how you open a page, but what if you wanted to open a native sheet instead? We'll just delete this open page action and instead add an open sheet. You can do the same thing here where you choose the, the page and you can choose the style. And then you can also choose the heights for the sheet. And these are all called detents. So by default, we have medium and large. Now when I tap on any of them, it's going to start with that medium. I can pan it up to be the full screen, the large style. And then all of this, totally native, I can close it. You can also adjust some of these other properties. So that's a super simple navigation interaction. Let me show you how you can add advanced interactions in seconds with prefabs. So I'm going to go back to my full page here, and I'm going to select this stack that has all of these cards we designed in it. We did this all in part one of this video. I've just added these cards to an additional stack on the page. Now we're just going to add a prefab here and see it work like magic. I'm going to go into my prefabs tab. You can see a ton of these are built from play. You can also create your own, which will show up up here at the top under my prefabs. Let's drag this drag and drop list onto this stack. And now just by adding that, I can now drag any of these items to rearrange them in this list. And I can also adjust these prefab controls to further customize that interaction. So if I wanted to scale down instead and maybe have a little bit more spring when I let go, now you can see it scales down and it's a lot springier. Now that's a little bit too much spring. I can reduce the spring, maybe add a little bit of time to it, maybe scale it all the way back up to almost 110%. And now that looks a little bit better. So 
This is one of my favorite things about Play is you can change these properties. It updates immediately on your phone and so you can test it and really feel what feels correct here for you. So that's how you can add advanced interactions in seconds with prefabs. Now that we've learned the basics of an interaction and some of what's possible to do in Play, let's create an interaction that's pretty much impossible to do in a tool like Figma. We're gonna go into the Pages tab, and this is where you can see all of the pages in your project. Let's navigate to this Profile tab by double-clicking on it. And I'm gonna go back into Design Mode quickly, select this full page, and make sure that we're switching to pin this page rather than the last page. Now, on this page, I have this custom header component, and this component has two different states. If you're curious about component states, I'll link another video where you can learn more about how to create component states and use them in interactions. So we have this default state and we have a scrolled state. We want to change the state of this component as the user scrolls down the page. You can see right now, nothing's changing. Now we're going to go select the full page and go into interaction mode. On the whole page, we're going to add a scroll trigger. The state for the scroll trigger lets you choose at what point during the scroll you want this to fire. Because we want to fire it the whole time we're scrolling, we're going to keep while scrolling. And I'm going to turn on trigger within range. And this basically allows me to fire a set of actions inside this scroll range. So if I do from 0% to 10%, these actions are going to fire in this first 10% of the scroll. So during that time, I want the state of this component to be default. So I'm going to add a set state action. We're going to target this custom header here, and we want it to be the default state. I can also turn on animation so it smoothly animates between the two states. Now I'm going to Command D to duplicate the scroll trigger and change the properties from 10% to 100% on the second scroll trigger. This means it's going to fire when the user is past that 10% all the way down the rest of the scroll. And for this set state action, we're just going to change the state to be scrolled rather than default. So now, again, we're going to double tap to reset. And as we scroll down the page, you can see that header is going to change. And then once we go back up to the top of the page, it's going to change back. And because we have that animation, it's moving between in a really smooth, springy way. Being able to create these interactions with native gestures and native elements allows the prototypes to feel more real, which means you're gonna get better feedback from your users. It also means that the transition from design to the development process is so much easier for engineers. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about sharing your prototypes via AppClip and how to export your projects to Xcode so your developers can start working from there. We'll see you there.